matter when you cash in. Show them the money. Come on, show them the money. $1,000, mm-hmm, once again, just imagine the smartphone on the palm of my hands. There will be a question. After it appears, you'll have like 12 seconds to decide which one of the following three answer choices is correct. You made your decision, just tap the correct answer choice. So you'll have to do it 12 times in a row. You can't start on answering, uh, you can't start answering on question number, I don't know, four or eight, just 12 in the row from the first one to the final one. So it is okay to be wrong because you have an extra bonus life from the start of the game, but uh, as many friends as you bring in, that's how many extra bonus lives you can get, so don't forget that you can on only use two of them during the uh, during one broadcast. So let's take a look at our viewer count right now. We are watched by 2,410 people online. Thanks for being here with us. Let's take a look at our at our chat, but there's nothing there yet. Maybe some good words about Lydia. That's what we are all waiting here to see. It's a great day for IQ Option. It's a great day to expand your financial knowledge. Therefore, it's time to play the game. Here comes question number one. An increase in the overall price level is called innovation, inflation, or constitution. And ladies and gentlemen, we just officially started. That's the final point where you can join us or just forget about this money. Are you in? Just tap the goddamn button. Mm -hmm. Innovation refers to finding better ways to produce better goods and services. Uh, the system of laws which formally states people's rights and duties is a constitution. An increase in the overall price level of goods and services is inflation. Huh. 1,982 people knew the correct answer to this question. Isn't that a great number, guys? Almost 2,000 people knew the correct answer. 1,982. Amazing results. Thank you. Here comes question number two. A measurement of the fluctuations of the price of an asset over time is called volatility, unemployment, or speculation. Now that's time for you to think, huh? Huh? Ah, uh, Mason S just said, come on! Come on, Mason S! Or, or did, did he mean that I have to come something on? Or just, uh, I don't know. Alonton Albun F just said hi. I didn't expect this one, to be honest. The purchase of an asset purely uh, in the hope that its market price will increase allowing a uh, profit to be made on its subsequent resale is speculation. The situation when people who want jobs cannot get them is called unemployment. A measurement of the fluctuations of the price of an asset over time is volatility. And 1,629 people, that's how many of you were smart enough to crack this question up. So, uh, maybe some of you who also use their extra bonus lives. That's maybe the point where you should do that. And the total quantity of people who will witness the next question will be even higher. Even more people will witness it. Let's find out. Question number three is here. The act of buying and using products is called deficit, competition, or consumption. So, an amount of uh, an amount by which uh, the money that a government spends uh, is more than it receives in tax in a particular period is a deficit. An activity involving two or actually more firms, in which each firm tries to get people to buy its own goods uh, in preference to the other firm's goods, is a competition. The act of buying and using products is consumption. And 1,665 people knew the correct answer. Guys, have we ever had such great results? I mean, 1,665 1, people who just uh, gave the correct answer for question number three. That's huge, actually. 
Thank you for being that huge. <laughs> Question number four is here. Which is a slang term for the New Zealand dollar? Kiwi, ninja, or kangaroo? Yeah. There's a small part of geography maybe here, I know. We are a very thought-provoking and informative show, as I told you many times. The ninja is a slang term for the American dollar, Japanese yen. Derives its name from New Zealand's na national icon, a flightless bird called a kiwi. And 986 people knew the correct answer, and please let me remind you right this right at this point. Let me please remind you that if you give a wrong answer, you can bring yourself back into the game. Five seconds after you gave a wrong answer, you can tap this button, heart-shaped button, and bring yourself into the game if you have an extra bonus life. So come on, do that if you need it. Come on. Question number five is here. Come on. Yeah. The top producer of cocoa beans as of 2017 was Brazil, Indonesia, or Côte d'Ivoire? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's more geographic questions. <laughs> it's not geography, I know. Brazil is the seventh largest producer of cocoa. 174,000 metric tons of cocoa beans. Indonesia is in the third place with 290,000 metric tons of cocoa beans. The global leader uh, in cocoa production is Côte d'Ivoire. During the stated period of time, it produced over 2 million metric tons of cocoa beans. And, well, take a look here. We've been waiting for that. For so long, only 216 people knew the correct answer, and I have no choice but to declare that we just witnessed a tough question. Wasn't that the first tough question in 2019, huh? Maybe that was some kind of the debut for this year. So here comes question number, number six, I believe. Jonathan Swift once said, a wise person should have money in, but not in his heart, in his head, in his wallet, or in his piggy bank. But my variant of in his was pretty good as well. And with that, let's take a look at our uh, chat right here. I just, Olivia V just said, I deserved it. I have no idea what you mean, but I do believe that you really did. So, uh, Jonathan Swift was an Anglo-Irish author of the 17th, 18th centuries. Swift was the foremost prose satirist in the English language. Swift is most famous for his novel Gulliver's Travels. His money quote sounds like this. A wise person should have money in his head, but not in his heart. And 202 people knew the correct answer. It is much better than before. It is a good question. So, uh, come on, guys, keep it up. That's that's the way to go. We believe in you. Question number seven is here. Which company owns YouTube, Apple, Google, or Microsoft? Oh, I forgot about my new thing. Apple, Google, or Microsoft? New year, new thing. The same old me, but the thing is new. So, uh, YouTube is an American video sharing website headquartered in San Bruno, California. Three former PayPal employees, uh, Chad Hurley, Steve Chan, and Jod Kareem, created the service back in February of 2005. In November of 2006, the site was purchased by Google for $1.65 billion. And 361 people knew the correct answer. 
I was told by some reliable sources. Mm -hmm. Question number eight is here. Ripple's native cryptocurrency is XRE, XRL, or XRE. Isn't that sound beautiful? X. Well, that's my newest thing. I know. Robert Angel said, "Ooh, hey Robert, we have something to say back." Ooh. XRL is the token of the Rialto platform. XRE is the token of the Revolver network. It is a network created to reward independent authors and artists in a fair and decentralized way. The native cryptocurrency of the Ripple network is XRP, the second largest cryptocurrency market uh, by cap. So, 306 people knew the correct answer. Thank you very much for being so smart and so and so. And thank you so much for being so. I think that's that's pretty much it. Question number nine is here. These measures purchasing power parity only on African countries: Big Mac Index, Starbucks Index, or KFC Index. Even newer. So, the Starbucks index measures triple P comparing to the cost of toll latte against the US dollar uh, in 16 countries, actually. The Big uh, Mac index compares the prices of a Big Mac burger in McDonald's restaurants all over the world. Inspired by the Big Mac index, the KFC index focuses solely uh, on Africa, since McDonald's has little presence there, whereas KFC chains operate in almost 20 countries across the continent. And once again, boom, once again, we didn't expect it, but boom, tough question again. Tough but slow. Questions. So, only 72 people knew the correct answer, and maybe that's the point where you should use your extra bonus lives. I don't know. Let's see. Question number 10. Mm -hmm. This is a medical device company, EQT Corporation, Telefax Incorporated, or DR Horton. Let's take a look at the chat. Oh, Alexi CH just said. Blah. I don't know. What's the. Blah. I have no idea. EQT Corporation is a petroleum and natural gas exploration and pipeline transport company uh, headquartered in EQT Plaza in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. DR Horton is the largest home builder in the United States of America as of 2017. Teleflex. Uh, Teleflex Incorporated is an American provider of specialty, of specialty medical devices for a range of procedures in critical care and surgery. So, 46, we were close, but it's still good. So only 46 people knew the correct answer. Thank you for being so smart, and thank you for being tough questionless. So, it's good. Let's take a look at question number 11 here. This technical indicator was developed by William Bloch in the 1990s. True strength index, relative strength index, or average true range? <laughs> it's getting more and more difficult with every step. I could have done this kind of a joke. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder and question as well, but, but I didn't. I mean, good boy. Tonight. So, the average true range is a technical analysis volatility indicator originally developed by J. Wells Wilder for, uh, for commodities. The relative strength index is a technical indicator used in the analysis of uh, financial markets. The RSI uh, was developed by J. Wells Wilder too. The true strength index shows both trend direction and overbought oversold conditions. It was first published by William Bloch in 1991. 39 people knew the correct answer, 
And let me tell you something. If you, I mean you, just, yeah, I'm talking to you. If you want to participate in our final round, that's the time where you should start using your extra bonus lives. It's the final, actually, it's the final spot where you can do that. So come on, you have an extra bonus life, just tap that button. Here comes the final round. Which country has a stock exchange with the fewest listed companies? Iceland, Myanmar, or Maldives? Sounds good, yeah. Pretty, pretty bit believable. But I've heard somewhere someone told me that maybe they bought this or Hanya. But the other words sound so. If there is some kind of attractive words in the world, that is Neon more or I don't know myself. The Iceland Stock Exchange, operating under the name NASDAQ Iceland, currently has 18 listed companies. The Maldives Stock Exchange, uh, founded back in 2008, has 9 listed companies. The smallest of these stock exchanges It has only 5 listed companies. So the correct answer to this question was clear to 20 people and these people will share our Grand Prix of $1,000. So each and every one of you, our fellas, will get hmm, 50 bucks. Isn't that incredible? It is. So here's the point where I should call you amazing, but I'll call you velvetly adorable. And that's it. Yep, from now on.